for the 100th and final cello talk, I've come to Jordan Hall in Boston, which sits inside the beautiful New England Conservatory, which so graciously gave me this room uh, for this opportunity to test, as I thought would be really interesting, the effect of changing things on the cello that we can change easily, strings and bridge. And for this test, I've done something very interesting. I have not only the camera, which I'm speaking to you now, also one all the way at the top of the balcony, and from there you can see how magnificent this hall is. So we'll be able to hear back to back what the effect of changing strings and bridges is. I'm beginning with the cello having on it a French bridge, which is a thicker bridge. It has more wood in it than the Belgian bridge. Now I'll change to the Belgian bridge. And now the Belgian bridge. Okay, now we're going to change some strings. You can decide for yourself, by the way, which of the bridges you like better. I'm not going to say which I like. Uh, we're going to start with the A string being a yard bar string. Very common string. And uh, then we'll go in either direction in terms of tension and thickness. Now let me quickly change the string. By the way, I'm in the process of changing from the Yargar A string to a Tomastic Spiracore string, 
which is much more flexible and much it's a much thinner string. I don't know if you can see, but even if I hang them on my fingers like this, the yargar, whoops, back here, the yargar is more stiff, and this string is more flexible. See the way it lies on my hand. So let me put this on. I'll be right back. Okay, now the Spiracore A. Okay, now we go to the Larson string. Larson strings are a completely different kind of string altogether. Let's see how this one sounds. And now the Larson A string. I think if you rewind in the video and go back to back one more time with these three strings, you'll see that they all sound very different. It's a matter of personal taste, but not only that, it's also a matter of what kind of cello you're playing, which one um, responds best to which kind of string. I think it's really important that you get to hear them from the distant mic, because how it sounds under your ear is one thing, but how it sounds to the people who paid to get into your concert is quite another. So uh, I'm really grateful that I had the chance to do this in this hall with this setup because very few people ever get a chance to experiment this way. So at the end of a big project like this, um, one tends to, to look back to see what we tried to do and to find out whether it was accomplished or not. Um, I know what I tried to do in these cello talks. Uh, I've tried to share information that I thought was factual, that was scientific, that was backed up by experiment, and that really did not have to do so much with my own opinions, my own artistic tastes, but something that was maybe universally useful to all cellists. Now, I don't know how much I was able to keep my own opinions out of it, but I do know that the success of these talks has to do not so much with what is actually on the web, but what is meant to you as cellists, whether it's helped you to improve your playing, to understand how your instrument works better, understand how instruments and sound work in halls and maybe even to help you teach your, your own students and explain things better. And if that's happened for you, then I'm, I'm very fulfilled by having done this project. Um, if you're interested to keep looking at these or if you haven't seen all of them, I would encourage you to go back once in a while and check the site because I may do something with reformatting uh, so that they're more organized, although this sort of random order is, of, of them is something I'm rather attached to because that's the way they came out. Uh, if one of them is not so clear or, or well done, I might even replace it, but some of the ones that have uh, already become favorites or classics, like the, the airplane bathroom one, don't worry, uh, they're not gonna go away. Um, so anyway, I also hope that these cello talks might encourage other musicians to 
take some videos and post things that they've discovered on the web to share with everybody because I think it's a really useful thing. I think this sort of community of online knowledge uh, about instrumental techniques can grow. There's a lot of room for that, especially if you look around. There's not, there's not very much. So I'm really, I feel lucky to have been a kind of a pioneer doing this, and I feel lucky to have had you along with me. So thank you very much. Who knows, maybe I'll cook up another hundred talks about something else, but until then, goodbye.